Right, hello everyone and welcome back to the Hull City Career Mode episode number three today. And we start this episode by seeing that Festus Arta has been loaned out to Wolfsberger. That offer was put in at the end, well, somewhere in the last episode, and that has now gone through. The first game is away at Highbury as we face Fleetwood, a game that we lost 4-1 in real life. Could we avenge real-life demons here? And what carnage would ensue? Because something always seems to happen when we play Fleetwood. Well, I can tell you what would happen right, right now. Andrew with a throw in, looking for Connolly, but Adela can wins it. Lewis Potter plays it through to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne needs a bit of help. Does he? Does he? No, he doesn't. He's beaten Mulgrew. He's beaten Connolly. And on his right foot, with the outside of his right foot, he scores his first goal for Hull City. And you can see what it means to him with a grin that he has on his face. Does he need help? No. Because at this level, you don't get defenders who can deal with that sort of quality from him. I said in previous episodes, he's way more effective when you play him centrally. And you can see what the goal means to him there. With the smile on his face and the gene up of the crowd that he's doing. Callum Elder would play it down the line to James Scott. He'd win the 50-50 with Tom Edwards and this would be the making of our second. Scott whipped it in. Lewis Potter's header falls to Jack Byrne at the back post who shot saved by Kearns very well. But Byrne finds Doherty. That is a brilliant, brilliant finish. That goal is stuff of pure class. To get it to loop like that, to bamboozle the keeper from that close in, it's brilliant. The ball from Byrne as well set him up nicely. And Jack Byrne was uh, was certainly on having a good day. And the finish from Doherty on the left foot. The keeper doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know, do I stay up? Do I dive as if I'm saving it in the, bo in the corner? I don't know what to do. Anyway, on a much darker note, George Long had messed up from the goal kick. He'd saved Glenn Whelan's shot. He'd saved Callum Camps' shot. But it, him and Reese Burke could be lying on top of each other and the defence was just too slow to get back and Fleetwood would half the deficit. It's really poor from me from the goal kick. I normally like to pass out from the back from my goal kicks and it just it promotes so many defensive errors. Glenn Whelan's initial shot was saved, then he squared it to Camps whose shot was blocked by Burke and then Long and Burke were just stuck together and Device was too slow to react to stop it and it looked as though, from when I was playing it, it was looping over. And I thought, hang on, how has he missed that? But he didn't miss it. George Long claims the cross and throws it straight out to Tom Edwards, who finds Mackay. A 1-2 with Paddy Madden. And it's a brilliant finish by Mackay to make it 2 all as we go into the break. But, again, I just need to boot it long, don't I? I just need to boot it long. Not try and be all fancy and pass out from the back. Because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Especially not with this defence. But it's a brilliant finish by Mackay, the left winger on loan from Swansea. And uh, as we go into the second half, Fleetwood deserve to be level. And they'd get ahead. Wes Burns to Callum Camps. Glenn Whelan arrives on the edge of the box. Inside the box, Whelan shoots, Whelan scores. It's a brilliant finish. By the former Stoke man. And the Fleetwood captain. Puts them ahead. Nothing that you could really do about that. It wasn't a defensive error. You could maybe pick holes in why his camp's got so much space. And why his wheeling got so much space. And Yeah, but... Yeah. I brought on Jacob Greaves at half-time. Um, to... Because everything that they were doing was coming down the left-hand side from Callum Elder and Jordi Device. So I thought I'd change one of them. I haven't got Brandon Fleming on the bench. But 3-2 down, we needed to do something. This time, George Long distributes it nicely. 
And the boys play through Jack Byrne. Will he shoot or will he square it? He'll square it to Tom Eaves. And it's three all. I want Eaves to pick the ball up, but he's not doing it. He's just kicking it and then doing a little dance on the goal line. So I'll just let him celebrate. He points to someone in the crowd. But it's brilliant football down that right-hand side. And Jack Byrne, he's having the game of his life. Two goals. Well, not two goals. Two two assists and two uh, one goal. He was brilliant. Fleetwood would come forward again. This time, Batty would head it clear. Eves would help it on. And Baldwin, what could he do? He'd play through Jack Byrne. Burn one on one. He's running out of energy though. He's shot, it's Sib, but he's brought down for a penalty. Fleet would give away a penalty. It's Charlie Mulgrew who brings Jack Byrne down. Now, the question was who would take the penalty? No Honeyman, because he's injured. Jack Byrne missed his last one. He's the best penalty taker we've got out there on the pitch. To bag his brace and to win us the game. The game of his Hull City career so far. Could he top it off with scoring the goal? Yes, he could. And sadly, I'm not on Xbox Series X or uh, or PS5. So, that, so nobody goes absolutely buck wild at the end. But, oh my word. What a frantic game. And it's finished off. The brilliant penalty into the bottom right hand corner by Jack Byrne. He's the one I wanted. He's the one I got. And he has been absolutely next level in this game. And when you put him at cam, as I said earlier, he's more effective. He is more effective. Look at those stats. Fleetwood, way more possession, way more shots. Just weren't clinical enough. And Jack Byrne, obviously, gets man of the match. Two goals, two assists. Absolutely lovely stuff. Now we'd move on to play the league leaders, MK Dons at the Stadium MK. By the way, that stadium for the Stadium MK, not accurate at all. I could think of a couple of um, generic stadiums off my head that are more off the top of my head, that are more like the Stadium MK than that one. After the franticness of last game, I thought, can we carry that on? Nah. It was so boring that first half, because MK Dons, they just play a five at the back, there's nothing you can do. As much as I try to break them down, they've just got too many men in the way that you can't do anything. But it gets to the 73rd minute, George Long would roll it out to Josh Emmanuel. Emmanuel would find Eves. Eves would flick it on to James Scott, who inside the box, he'd cut back. He'd cut inside onto his stronger right foot. And it's a brilliant, brilliant finish into the back of the net. And we would finally, finally take the lead that we so, so deserved. We defended well. We were the more aggressive team. And we did manage to break down their five at the back. Eventually. And James Scott, beautiful little drag onto his um, onto his right foot to put it past the keeper. And you can see there, delighted with it. And we would make it two. Burke would play a beautiful ball over to Scott, who would head it down to Eves. Eves would chest it down. He'd give it to Gutierrez out of the academy. And then Tom Eves, he just run. He just run. Eves! Lovely stuff by Tom Eves. And that would finish the game off. That would take us to the top of the tree. Jordi de Weissman had the match in that one. He was brilliant at the back. Now, could we stay top against Ipswich? Had to make changes for this one as tiredness and fatigue kicked in because we've got quite low stamina in this group. Free kick very early on. De Weiss and Coyle play a nice one too. De Weiss would find Jack Byrne who whips it in towards Eves. He can't get someone on it. And Chambers will give it to Hughes. Find Dazelle. Find... Get it, find Guion Edwards, who's clean in. I bring George Long out and stop thinking, oh, I don't want him to get dinked. But Edwards puts it in for 1-0 after only four minutes. And we were behind to Ipswich, who were 21st in the league at the start of this game. There was work to be done. This team, this combination of players, 
There was a couple of new faces in there. Louis Coyle made his first league start for us. Brandon Fleming started for the first time in the league under, well, in this career mode. But the majority of the squad was just the same. Byrne was still at Cam. But we just were caught out on the counter very, very quickly. Um, in the in this game, but we come back. James Scott holds off everyone, then turns Luke Chambers and on his weaker left foot slots it right into the bottom corner. Keeper done it his near post. I believe they call that absolutely lovely in the industry. That is brilliant from James Scott to hold off everyone, every Ipswich defender that challenged him. None of them could stop him. Scott on the right, he's more effective than Scott on the left. Eves is playing really well up top and Lewis Potter is chipping in where he can from the left. Lewis Potter's more effective up top but when Eves is in the form that he's in, you can't ignore him. You simply cannot ignore him. Edwards in though, at the end of the first half, would we concede? George on with a brilliant save with the legs. Device would head down and Doherty can break. We've seen Doherty break quickly before. He'd play it to Jack Byrne. Byrne fouled a little bit, but he managed to get a pass off to Tom Eaves. Eaves would finish it. Absolutely lovely stuff from Tom Eaves. In the form of his Hull City career. And Tom Eaves does the job and gets us 2-1 up. Just before the break. Beautiful ball by Byrne under challenge. And the finish by Tom Eaves was sublime. With the right foot, right into the back of the net. Nearly, nearly top bins. And shows his strength with a one-handed press-ups to celebrate as well. Tom Eaves is, what was that? Third goal of the season in the league. And that would be very much, well... Yes, it was the last kick of the half. We didn't need to change anything at the break, but those stats, Ipswich again dominating us on possession and shots, but every shot we had was on target and two of them went in the back of the net. We were just more clinical than they were. Simple as. And it would show. Because Caden Jackson there turns Dazelle. Dazelle, can he shoot? He does shoot, gets his shot off. Easy save for George Long. He'd roll it out to Brandon Fleming. And Fleming couldn't play the ball through to Lewis Potter. Lewis Potter would take the throw in. Fleming would hold the ball up to give it back to Lewis Potter who took the throw in. Fleming and Lewis Potter combining. Can Keno shoot? Yes, he can. Can Keno score? Yes, he can. Keen Lewis Potter bags himself a goal. All the front three chipping in with goals. And KLP, simply brilliant. It's a lovely bit of hold-up play by Fleming and the run by Lewis Potter. Difficult angle to shoot at as well to get it in at the far post. But he does it. He does it. Do you want to know why? Because he's the best player in this division. He's the best player in this division. No ifs, buts or maybes. He is the best player in this division. But, however, there would be a few complications for us. As Alfie Jones there would look for a pass. It's cut out by Hughes. He'd give it to Nolan. Hawkins would head it back to Hughes. To Dozell. And Andre Dozell could find Hawkins. He'd play it back to Nolan. Who'd find Hawkins again. Hawkins. He'd play it to Emma Hughes. Whose shot was well saved by Long. But it's straight back into the path of Hughes. Who picks the ball up and says, come on, 83rd minute. We can still get a point out of this or even maybe win it. George Long, he was, he's been so good in this game. He saved most things that have come at him. But that's so unlucky. If, it, if, if he'd have caught that or just tried to deflect it away somehow, he could have done it. But Long, most definitely man of the match. He was fantastic. And that ends this episode, guys. Join me next time for Transfer Deadline Day in the Hull City career mode. See you later. Bye-bye.